Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science. This is module five on Earth's processes. And there are actually two components to what we're going to look at. So I've split them into two halves, really. Uh, we want to look at the effects of the super cycle on both climate and evolution. So this one will focus just specifically on changes in the climate. So we do need you to outline the plate tectonic super cycle and the um, effect that it can have on large scale phenomena, which includes both climate and evolution. But in this case, we're just going to focus on the climate. Difficult to be able to describe to compare these two things. So we want to just for this video, try and just focus on some of these direct links between plate tectonics and climate and see if we can explain some of these links. And then later on, once we've put the second half uh, of this idea together, we'll be able to um, make a comparison or even um, look at some sort of contributing factors uh, to the effects on evolution of changes in the climate linked to the plate tectonic super cycle. So it's probably worth trying to contextualize the super cycle in Australia, some of the changes that we can see here. And a big shout out to Mr. Guy at Fort Street High uh, for some of the fantastic material that he's been sharing with so many earth and environmental science teachers, myself included. Australia has three main Archaean cratons. And so they are very ancient, um, almost since the formation of the Earth, not quite, but, but pretty close potentially in age. And these three are the ones that we can kind of track back the longest. They're the, kind of the first identifiable, identifiable blocks of the Australian continent. And they may have joined together around 2.3 billion years ago in the formation of a supercontinent. Subsequent, and we now have talked a little bit about the uh, super cycle, so we know about the formation of these supercontinents, the breaking of those supercontinents apart into small continents, and then the reformation as they come uh, back together, but not necessarily in exactly the same way. And as this process continued, we can see several younger cratons that we can recognize a lot more towards the what's now the eastern or central parts of the country um, over the next couple of billion years. And this was going to continue happening as the super, super cycle continued. What we see is around about 500 million years ago, Australia's east coast was part of a subduction zone. So we, one of the things we know about subduction zones is subduction zones are often associated with island arcs. And so the island arcs that we can see, um, obviously we can't see them now, so we're looking for evidence. And that's one of the things that we were looking in our last um, video at when we were talking about the plate tectonic super cycle or the, the processes associated with the Wilson cycle. We were looking for evidence of uh, the different stages or the different parts of each of those cycles. And we actually found them um, in various different places, locations around the world. And we can see evidence in the New South Wales Central West region of some of these really ancient volcanic mountains, which suggests that they were part of an island arc. And that was a consequence of a subduction zone, that deep trench island arc, uh, classic convergent boundary that we get between oceanic crust and continental crust, or sometimes oceanic and oceanic crust. Over the next 100 million years, this subduction zone moved um, relative to where we are now, further to the east. And as a result, what we had was a change in the way that the collision zone um, uh, affected orogeny. So the changes in the amount of uh, mountain building that we were seeing shifted us away from this idea of volcanic island chains into a fold mountain kind of orogeny. And this is what we see for the Great Dividing Range. So this big uh, region of fold mountains all along that east coast of Australia. And so we think that was a possibility as a result of this kind of compressing that was going on. This was also coinciding with the formation of Pangaea, the supercontinent that, can, that was made up of the northern continent of Laurasia, the supercontinent of Laurasia, and the southern supercontinent of Gondwana, of which Australia was a part. When we look at the super cycle, one of the things that we can see is some um, uh, consequences based on changes in sea levels. Now, you might 
I want to review some of the material that we looked at in our Year 11 course, just particularly about the Great Ocean Conveyor Belt, about the cycles of ocean currents, both the ones that are driven uh, at the surface by winds and deep underneath by those differences in salinity levels. If we're um, forming these supercontinents, we're changing not only the way these continents are distributed uh, around the Earth, but we're also changing the oceans. We're also creating these super oceans, which is one of the consequences of the formation of supercontinents. And obviously that's going to change some of the ways in which ocean currents are flowing that can have quite a significant impact on um, a, well, a number of different factors, especially the climate, but also on sea level. So as we get this um, mountain formation, these fold mountains starting to happen, um, some squeezing happening that's raising the continental plates, what we have often is a decrease in sea level. So if you think about the fact that when we, the rift valleys form initially at the juvenile stage, you're getting um, increases in sea level. We'll look at that in the next slide. Um, but when you get this compression happening, then you're getting uh, decreases in sea level happening as well. Now, of course, um, changes in the way that the continents are distributed or how they're moving relative to one another can be a, uh, can have a consequence on changing sea levels, but so can temperature. Um, and in fact, one of the things that's a concern for us in terms of um, our current issues associated with global warming and climate science is not so much the melting of the um, ice at the poles, though that is a problem, but that's more to do with albedo than it is anything else. The problem is the fact that when we heat up water, it expands. And so this change in the heat that we have associated with um, some of the rising and falling um, associated with the um, plate tectonic supercycle has also had an implication or potential implication on the temperatures of the oceans, at least the average temperatures of the oceans. And that can too lead to changes in sea level so there's a couple of um, things that are happening in terms of uh, our plate tectonic supercycle, what's happening to the oceans, what's happening to the uh, ocean currents as a consequence of this, and also what's then happening in terms of the climate. So there's a couple of important influences that it's worth thinking about or perhaps even expanding on when we think about um, how the plate tectonic supercycle influences climate. We've had a little bit of a look at changes in sea level, and obviously there are going to be some changes in sea level. Probably one of the significant things is volcanic activity. The thing with volcanic activity, a result of uh, convergence, those um, subduction zones leading to volcanic island arcs, uh, can release large amounts of material into the atmosphere. Ash clouds can have a, a filtering effect on the sunlight and that can have an effect on photosynthesizers. Um, Sulfur-based aerosols, so sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide, uh, sulfur trioxide, these gases can also um, get into the atmosphere and they can create some significant issues. So, and, and of course, so does um, increased levels of carbon dioxide. And we know that uh, because that's one of the things we probably looked at uh, quite significantly. There seem to be a lot of volcanic activity that potentially is associated with the Permian extinction. And we will look at extinction events a little bit later uh, in this particular module, but that could also have um, a, uh, a link there um, between the, the extinction of a, a large scale, scale extinction, a lot of different species and potentially um, some significant volcanic activity. There certainly does seem to be, when we look at the formation and look at the age of a lot of um, granite formations in particular, we do find that there is a significant correlation between um, those events, those vol major volcanic events, and um, the greenhouse ice house cycles. We've talked about the um, changes to the ocean current flow, so this is another potential uh, issue and sometimes when you when you're looking at these and what we're trying to do of course is we're trying to reconstruct back in time so part of what we're doing is looking for evidence of of past activity and so therefore sometimes it can be difficult to determine which thing came first and which thing affected the next thing but certainly changes in the ocean currents these um, these massive oceans um, the Panthalassic Ocean, for example, associated with the supercontinent of Pangaea would have 
definitely changed the way in which um, ocean uh, currents were circulating materials. This would have had an impact on things like the trade winds, the walker circulation in the Pacific Ocean, and how it has an impact on particularly El Nino conditions um, that we experience in Australia. Changes in the ice caps would also have been uh, important, particularly as we know that the continents have wandered, so they're not all in the same situation now as they have been over time. And perhaps some changes in ocean salinity. And again, this could be um, due to the average temperature of the oceans, which also may have changed over time. And again, therefore, you, look, you, you try to consider which came first and which um, which caused a later effect. So there's lots and lots of different influences on climate, and that's why we wanted to have a separate look at this, um, just so we can go into some of these in a little bit more detail in class. But we also need to consider the effect of the plate tectonic supercycle on evolution, and we'll do that in the next video. Thanks for watching.